This is Alabama Politics with Steve Blowers, an in-depth interview with Alabama's top political newsmakers. Now, from the studios of Troy University, here is Steve Flowers. I'm Steve Flowers, and welcome to Alabama Politics. Folks, we're fortunate tonight to have as our guest the head of the Department of Public Safety, who is now the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency Director, Spencer Collier. Spencer's a former legislator from Mobile, and he's been our uh, Alabama Law Enforcement Agency Director for several years now. We're glad to have him on the show. Thank you, Spencer. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me. Appreciate your time. You. Uh, Spencer, well, y'all is a Troy University graduate. I didn't know that. We were sitting here waiting before the show started. But he grew up in Mobile, uh, in, uh, in South Mobile County, and uh, he is a family man. He's got a, uh, is your wife from Mobile too? She is. Mobile she is. County, and so Spencer's was born and raised in his district. Ran for the legislature in 2002 as a young man, was elected to the legislature and served two four-year terms, and was in his, elected to his third term and beginning his third term uh, in 2011. A guy who sat close to him in the legislature uh, they'd served together for about eight or nine years, and he happened to be elected governor. Uh, Dr. Robert Bentley was representing Tuscaloosa County, and Spencer was representing Mobile County. And as would be the case when you serve in the legislature with people, you become good friends. And uh, Dr. Bentley became governor and, and uh, asked Spencer, who was, a, who was a trooper by profession. He is a longtime state trooper, uh, made a career of it, majoring in criminal justice and political science at Troy University. And, uh, went back home to Mobile and became a trooper and was in administration and served in the legislature. But I've taken all your time, but I want to tell folks some of your background and everything. But uh, now, when you when he appointed you in 2010, after he was elected in 2011, it was the Department of Public Safety. Homeland Security. Oh, Homeland that's Security. right. That's right. We had, but, but it was not, who was the Department of Public Safety director? Uh, Hugh McCall. Hugh McCall okay. served as, as the he director. Was, he was Riley's, wasn't he? No, uh, Chris Murphy and Chris oh, left in 2010. Okay. Uh, Hugh came in with me, and I went to Homeland Security, and Colonel McCall went to public safety. I had forgotten yeah. that. Was Homeland Security a new department, wasn't it? Uh, Homeland Security stood up in uh, actually 2003. Alabama okay. was the first state in the nation to create a state Homeland Security. Who was before you then? Uh, Jim Walker, Colonel Jim Walker oh, was yeah. the first, and uh -huh. then Art Faulkner served yeah. briefly, and now in emergency management. Uh huh. So he named you Homeland Security Director. Correct. I, I was I was his uh, first and I guess only Homeland Security Director under the legislation that combined public safety uh, and, and consolidated state law enforcement into the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency. Then came over as the secretary. How many years was were you Homeland Security Director? Um, four years. Four four years in to fourteen. That's correct. And then Spencer in the the first part of the second term in fifteen he passed y'all passed legislation. You weren't legislation, but Legislation, when did he start floating that idea about consolidating the agency? Well, you, you know, truthfully, uh, Governor Bentley and I discussed this uh, in December of 2010. He was the governor-elect. It was a phone call he, he, when he asked me to serve as Homeland Security Director. And he said he wanted to look at that as we went on consolidating state law enforcement services. Uh, that was probably sped up. The legislature also had it on their agenda. Uh, and it was actually the 2014 session. Uh, it passed. The last of the quadrennium. It, it did, and then it, it immediately uh, abolished Homeland Security, created the possession of, position of secretary, and then gave me 18 months to put together the plan uh, to combine uh, 12 agencies or functions into one state law enforcement agency. Did Colonel McCall, he was going to retire anyway, wasn't he? Uh, well, correct. He, he retired uh, after a long career. He uh -huh. came on as a cadet. Uh, uh, get invaluable service to, he, to he was he was ready to retire anyway what well, it's what's ironic is is I worked for Colonel McCall as a, as a trooper uh, so to come on and serve with him um, and then now absorb that agency into, into mm -hmm. Leah uh, it's an exciting time you know Tom but uh, you being from the from the southern part of Mobile County you couldn't be anymore in southern no, that's it. The, you're the most southern district legislative wise in the state. I, I never had to worry about them drawing my district out. Because that's it, right. <laughs> it, was, it was water after me. You know Spencer when you think about that though uh, and you I guess you served all your time in Mobile as a trooper didn't you? Well, uh, no I actually left going into my second term uh, I went to work for, uh, for a law firm and then did some private consulting doing investigative work. In Montgomery, in Mobile, Mobile. But you out, but you're always in Mobile, though. My whole whole life until uh -huh. until here. What I'm saying, getting around to ask it, saying to you, 
you know, unless you have traveled the state, which I'm sure you have now as Homeland Security and ALE uh, a director, oh, don't we have a beautiful, diverse state? Oh, we do. People don't do. realize do. the diversity of this state geographically. Right. It's like it's like night and day. Right. You go uh, on an October afternoon. I never forget. I, I once a year or so I visit my newspapers and I travel to. I tra plan to travel up to Northeast Alabama uh, during the late October. Beautiful. That Gunnersville, Scottsboro, Fort Payne area. And I'm gonna tell you something. I remember I got a little paper up in Stevenson. Do you know what I Stevenson? Know, I do. Yes. And a little a guy up there. I go up and see him, and he carries my column and. Uh, I remember one, one Thursday afternoon, late in October, driving down that Highway 72, and I told them when I got to Scottsboro to the Daily Sentinel, I said, I don't think anywhere in the country, Asheville, North Carolina, hadn't got right. a thing on this part of Alabama. And then you go all the way down to Mobile, the pristine beaches of, of Baldwin County, and uh, I love my area of the state here in the Wiregrass, but we really just mostly got pine trees and flat land, you know, but, but the state's beautiful, isn't it? Well, it, it is, and you know, it's probably uh, only five or six years ago that I discovered Little River Canyon in that area. Exactly. And, and it's as beautiful as anywhere in Tennessee or North Carolina. It's really, a, it's a hidden gem for the state. Uh, you probably were already Homeland Security right before you saw that part of the state, I, weren't you? Uh, I think I was still right. serving in the legislature. My pastor in Mobile had a cabin in the area. Uh -huh. and. Uh, you know, shame on me. I had no idea of how diverse, how beautiful it was, the canyon itself, and uh, got where I spent a lot of time there. And uh, we still periodically go to that area. Uh, you know, Fort Payne, Dogtown. I'm probably one uh -huh. <laughs> of the few Alabamians know where Dogtown is, and uh, absolutely love the area. There's really a Buck's Pocket. Yeah. Do you know that? Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I told you before the show, I've got my book coming out. This It's called Alabama Political Stories. And in that book, I talk about the different areas of the state and their. Uh, certain things like Buck's Pocket, why is, why is Goat Hill called Goat Hill? You know, why is uh, the first, there was a first Monday trade day in Scottsboro. There was a traditional thing. Mule Day in Hamilton. Day, yeah. Hamilton and just different things. But let me go back if you can. I didn't mean to uh, digress a little bit, but back to that diversion of the merger of the ALEA. I want, I want our viewers to understand exactly, I don't know if many of them really realize that. They probably think of you as the highway director, I mean, I mean, the public safety director, the uh, you know, the public safety director is your, you, you know, you head of the state troopers. Right. The Spencer College is head of the state troopers. Well, it's more than that because you were Homeland Security, we didn't have that in 2003. Explain how, the details, if you would, sure. of you're over the entire law enforcement, everybody who wears a state uh, law enforcement hat now is under one agency, Alabama Law Enforcement a in, in right. Agency. A-L-E-A, and they're on the back of the troopers' things now. Uh, tell, tell, tell the details sure. in layman terms of exactly what happened with that. Well, and, and, and it's, you're seeing more and more of it across the country. Uh, what, you, what we did is, is, is kind of two study committees were done, one led by the legislature and one led by the administration, and I was fortunate enough the governor let me chair that. And what we discovered is uh, we, we had a lot of different agencies in Alabama, state law enforcement agencies, um, that were performing very like missions. And what wound up happening is, is that uh, we would have one agency performing a mission and the second agency was doing it. Let me give you an example. If you're a commercial vehicle in Alabama, prior to the creation of ALEA, you had three state agencies that regulated commercial vehicles. Department of Revenue, uh, Public Service Commission, and then the Department of Public Safety's Motor Carrier Unit. Uh, those three agencies necessarily didn't always communicate well together. Well, if the agencies responsible for the enforcement aren't communicating, what about the poor private businessman? man who's a, maybe an owner operator. So we looked at those type things and we wound up combining 10 agencies, but really 12 functions. There were 10 agencies that had law enforcement people? Actually, there there was 22 in the state that, that had Who law Who all had law enforcement? If, I don't mean name all Steve, time. if it, 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 pretty much every regulatory board had. PSC definitely had them. Yeah, PSC, uh, ABC? Revenue, uh, ABC, uh, Ag and Industries. Uh, Asegis, Homeland Security had law enforcement, uh, Department of Public Safety. Were these career uh, troopers though? Uh, career, uh, only the guys in public safety were troopers. Uh, so we had these other agencies we merging together. That's what we've been doing for the last 18 months, trying to find the, the best model. And really, Steve, it looks like what a major metropolitan law enforcement would look like. We now 
take state law enforcement, and we have a we have a uniform division. That's the Department of Public Safety. So that's the highway patrol, the troopers you're, you're going to see, and that is the backbone and the infrastructure of state law enforcement. But additionally, now the Marine Patrol it used to be the Marine Police and the Department of Conservation is now brought under the. Illegal How many patrol. were in there in conservation? Uh, ballpark, not exactly. Uh, on the Marine Police side, it was about sixty. Um, uh, and I think we want well, you up, took it over how many how many state troopers were the ball I don't mean exactly the ball yeah ball. well in, in the highway patrol it was about 380 380 highway patrol then you had about had about, about 70 or 80 in ABI oh uh, so ABI was under the under the it under, was under the, it was so you had 38 actual road troopers and about 80 ABI guys Correct. under public, uh, public safety, safety. The, who was the biggest one that came in and merged? Was it PSC or conservation? Uh, conservation, uh, no, actually probably ABC. ABC had about about 130 enforcement. And they came under y'all. They did, the enforcement. So all their enforcement uh -huh. came under. So it's both alcohol enforcement uh, and narcotics. ABC had a very robust narcotics uh, uh -huh. uh, agency. That's now under ALEA. So in addition to the uniform side, we have the investigative side where we combined ABI, uh, ABC, uh, CGIS, Homeland Security Investigations, AG Investigations, and now it's the State Bureau of Investigations. Uh -huh. uh, and we currently have uh, almost 200 special agents working that. The, well, let me ask you this question. Do, do, do each of those guys, like they were, they had learned and been trained on the right. conservation, or PSC or right. ABC. Do, they, do you, under you, do you have a subsecretary that oversees those guys? Uh, I have a director of public safety that oversees the uniform division, then I have a, an investigative director over SBI that oversees and runs the day-to-day -day of investigations. So a lot of those, a lot of those uh, conservation people came under that area. Correct. And all the ABI people went under there. Uh, correct. Uh, ABI uh, came uh, under SBI, what we call SBI now, and then the uh, Marine Police came under the DPS. And a difference that the public should see is uh, what we used to call Marine Police, is now Marine Patrol, and those, they're actually wearing the uniform, they are troopers. Uh, it's, it's funny, I've had calls saying, when did state troopers get boats? But those old Marine Police <laughs> boats are now Marine Patrol, uh -huh. and uh, they're, they're troopers that work that. Spencer, what about this, what about, do you, how many lieutenants do you have under you that are like, head, uh, you call them, you call them what, do you, what do you call well, them? Well, on the DPS side, it's a director, carries a rank of colonel, on the uh -huh. SBI side, it's a director, uh, um, and, and goes by the title uh, director, and then I have a chief of staff, uh, and, and really that that's it. Are they are they uh, work at your pleasure? They do. Yeah, they do. Are most of them career people though? They, they are, and and when the legislation but you could passed, have bought a layman in, couldn't no, you? No, the one of the restrictions on the legislation. This one was a little different. Okay. It said, uh, the leadership appointments had to come from what we call a legacy oh, good. agency. That's good. So, uh, so you couldn't bring some political no. guy. The governor couldn't say, I got old Joe Smith who right. ran my campaign in Huntsville. I want to make him head right. of the conservation. Right. Oh, but you, so you, it, that's that's good. Yeah, they, it, it was in the statute and uh, even the position of secretary. That's the one the governor. Oh, so you've got to have the, uh, that too. It, it, it says you must have uh, substantial law enforcement experience. It's uh -huh. the only one that you can bring that wasn't in state law enforcement. But I, I was. That's the yeah. background I came in. But all the other but leadership you're positions. All your people have to have. Them. Everyone is career state law enforcement. Uh -huh. You probably knew a lot of them, didn't oh, you? I did. I uh -huh. did. And uh, uh, Gene Wiggins is our SBI director. He and I came on together as troopers. Uh, John Richardson is our is our DPS director, our colonel, uh, uh, career ABC agent, uh, also worked in executive protection. Uh, so, yeah, either working as a trooper, working as a legislator, uh, you know, got to know most in-state law enforcement, and, and one of the advantages is the legislation gave me the ability, of course, uh, with the governor's authority, uh, to make these appointments. Uh, and, and I think I've made some really, really good appointments. Do you bring them in every week, or y'all talk every day, uh, or what? No, they, something that's different, it's unusual. Uh, my office is physically located at the RSA headquarters. I brought those two directors in, and their Which office is Which building are you in? Uh, we're in the RSA headquarters, in the, okay. in the old Asegis location. Uh -huh. uh, so, and then across the street is, is the DPS uh, SBI building. But those two leaders, are, are their offices are next to mine. We have uh -huh. that daily contact. Uh, and I know day-to-day -day what DPS is doing and what SBI is doing. And most importantly, what we're forcing them to do is work together. Uh, that didn't always happen in the past. Do you have uh, uh, the, the conservation, uh, the, the, uh, the requirements educationally to be a trooper or slash conservation officer what are the educational and, and are the, are requirements? And the, the merit system, they're picked out of the merit system. That's Everybody correct. Everybody is under That's the merit correct. system. So they pass a, a, 
a written exam, a mental exam, that's and correct. a physical exam. That's correct. Before they select you. That's right. Then they go through another rigorous training after that selection process. That, that, that is that is correct. Uh, the, the minimum education, according to the merit system, says a you know a GED or high school diploma. I'm going to be candid. It's difficult to get on with just that. Because of the test. Sure. It will. The, the, but our, our also our merit system weighs heavily in favor of, of uh, military. Right. Uh, uh, so so generally we're hiring uh, individuals that's either coming out of the military uh, or they get some, weighted in that merit that, system. When that, I was, that, yeah. That that is correct. So yeah. they're either having military experience or prior law enforcement experience. Uh, I don't want to be discouraging, but it, it's 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 very difficult for someone to come out of high school and not have that experience and get on. Yeah. Uh, with us. Unlike they will, because that, that, that education is part of the, it is. the evaluation it is. of, of sure. hiring. You know, okay? it, it, it helps in the scoring. Mm -hmm. Now on the SBI side now, there's, there's, it, it's a little tougher. It's not a little tougher. It's a lot tougher. And it requires uh, uh, either college or equivalent uh, law enforcement investigative work. Uh -huh. uh, and we purposely set that standard high uh, where we're only getting the best in SBI. One of the biggest differences now, we can do direct hires in the SBI. In the past, you may remember the ABI, they had to, to be an ABI agent, you had to be a trooper. Mm -hmm. Well, now we have the ability, let's say, if you have a career homicide detective from Birmingham or Montgomery, they have the ability to apply with the SBI and, and get hired directly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that has not happened in a long time. Spencer, as far as your uh, time is concerned, uh, do you feel, you know, it really doesn't, doesn't necessarily help the department, I guess it does, to do PR stuff like this? I mean, do you... I bet you get a lot of requests to be on television shows and radio shows right. and things. So you have to kind of gauge your time because otherwise you'd be doing this kind of stuff all the time, right. wouldn't you? Well, and, and, and I've got a good staff that helps me coordinate that. Uh, it's a little bit of my background. I spent four to five years, almost five years as a PO for the troopers. So oh, okay. I, I have a natural affection for doing that. I, I, I believe that getting in front of the people and, and, and educating or if you make changes, inform the public of that. So. Uh, depending on what's going on, the legislature's in session, I have to ramp that down. I have to be involved with what the legislature's yeah. doing. But outside of that, we generally try to do at least one or two a week, and it's uh, it's all over the state. And part of my mission as a secretary uh, is to promote both the DPS, our troopers, and, and our special agents, and bring to mind what we're facing, budget difficulties, um, you know, the, the feedback from the public, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. And uh, I firmly believe in, in, in a strong public relations uh, and, and we have full-time troopers that do that throughout the state, where if I'm not available, they, they can be there and be a spokesperson for the agency. Especially on a given day, how many troopers will be on the road? Um, it, it's probably going gonna, it's, it's gonna to surprise you, but uh, there are certain days we could have as many as 100 patrolling the interstates during the day. Uh, there are certain times that number could be half of that. Now, what is frightening, and I think it's important to tell the truth and get this information out, and it's part of my job to fix it. There's times at night we have six to eight Working the entire state, state. yes, sir, uh, from from midnight to six a.m. And uh, how would you get to a wreck? You saw way up in you, this northeast you, corner. You drive a long time, uh, and I did it. I was a trooper. We, uh, you know, at midnight, I'd cover multiple counties, uh -huh. and uh, you uh, response time is, is great. And that's when you rely on local law enforcement. I see. They're to, there. They, yeah. They'll get there and secure yeah. the scene. That's right. Uh, yeah. And, and, until you can get there. Now, so we're, we're wanting to fix that. That that number is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. So your folks are better served on the interstates, aren't they? Well, they are, mm -hmm. but our troopers are kind of a misnomer as our highway patrol. We call the highway patrol, but it's it's a true state police. I mean, like you go to Mississippi, the highway patrol is restricted to uh, state and federal highways, and that's not the case in Alabama. Uh, in, anywhere in the state, they have authority. You know, talking about that, and I've talked about this in my column and uh, on television, you know, this budget crisis that we're in, and you serve in legislation, and you saw it coming over the years. I did, yes, sir. You know, 380 troopers is not enough troopers to cover the state. We're, we're a fairly large-sized state, but, but geographically, we're a pretty big-sized state. We, we are, and, it's, and it's, it's, we, we discussed earlier, it's pretty diverse. Uh, if, if you look throughout the state, we've got, we got certain counties in the Black Belt that don't have cities above 5,000, where we are the only law enforcement. Uh -huh. uh, there may be a small sheriff's office with four or five deputies. Uh, the services we, pri we provide there are, are huge. So you've uh, got to give more weight to those counties? Well, on, on the patrol side, we base it basically on population, but uh, what's really not known is on the investigative side. If there, Generally, if there's a murder in the Black Belt or if there's a murder in the Macon County area, uh, we work that. Now, we work it very closely with the Sheriff's Office, but we go in and handle those investigations. They don't have staff like Hoover. 
No, who, right. who, who, correct. Who, correct. who would take care of it? And by no means is that a slight right. on those agencies. Right. They're, they're just small. They don't have the time uh, to devote to that. Who would time. never ask you to come to help? No, <laughs> but we're, I mean, we're there. We have good partnerships with them, uh -huh. but we're needed to provide those services in the very rural counties. Uh, so when we talk about losing troopers or losing agents, Unfortunately, it's going to affect the areas that need it the, the worst. It's going to be the, the, the areas that are already socioeconomically depressed. Um, in addition to that, if we lose troopers, that's where they're going to be lost from, or we lose agents where it's going to be. And so policing, drunk driving or speeding or hazardous things like that, in a metropolitan area, the metropolitan police going to catch them. They're going to be the, the one to catch yeah, them. Yeah, that's, that's correct. And, and they're, even though we have state police powers anywhere, we, we challenge our guys. We need to be focused on the rural areas. Those, is that right? That is correct. Uh -huh. Those 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 larger cities, particularly Mobile, Montgomery, Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, yeah. Dothan. Uh, there's times when we're asking them for help. Uh, they generally handle everything in their city limits, everything, and then uh -huh. then we handle it outside of that if it's traffic related. Will uh, Dothan go outside their city limits sometimes? Will they? Yeah, I think all all, all those cities will. agencies will. They have a police jurisdiction, generally uh -huh. three to five miles, but the services they offer there are limited. If it's a wreck right side of Tuscaloosa and Limits, they're going to go out there and service it. They, they're at least going to go stand by. If it's a property type, uh -huh. they're probably going to investigate it. If it's an injury, they're going to ask for us to come, uh -huh. or if it's in the police jurisdiction. Uh -huh. And a lot of that really gets down to the relationship we have with those local agencies. Spencer, what I want to get to, though, is what I was getting around to about being a big state geographically. Right. And 380 guys possibly on the road. First of all, what I was going to ask you, too, on holidays, you have more out there, don't you? We, we do, and one of the great things about Aaliyah is uh, us all coming together is now I have the ability to even tell those special agents, you're going to put a Class B uniform on, you're going to get out and work. During work, Christmas. Exactly, work highway patrols. Well, they so get, we can, so we can they get overtime that. for that? Uh, no, unless they're on a federal grant. Oftentimes, uh -huh. uh, through DOT, we'll get federal grants to work on additional speed overtime or DUI overtime. Uh, but whether they're getting overtime or not in those specialized periods, we're, we're going to put as many as possible. How many hours a week does a trooper put in? Uh, well, they're supposed to work at least 40, of course. Uh, there are certain situations where they're working way above that. And um, Christmas time they're working oh, on yes, holidays? yes, well, they, they are. So uh, when you come on to be a trooper, you expect to maybe spend also, holidays on yeah, the it was, it, it's, it's, it's When understood. you became a trooper. Yeah, it's, it's, understood. It, it's understood. You were going to spend your Thanksgiving it, in, on your, in it, your car? It was. I think I spent my first uh, six Christmases working. Uh, Is that right? The first eight years of my career. So every holiday. trooper's out there Christmas and Thanksgiving? Uh, yes, yes. All 380 of them? Yes, sir. Right. Okay. okay. Well, Maybe not all 380, but we're, we're going to greatly increase our presence. We have certain travel periods that the data shows. Fourth of July. Of Fourth of July is a big one. New uh -huh. Year's, Labor Day, Memorial Day. Uh -huh. uh, we're we're going to ramp up our manpower during that time. But you're right. Now, we're up from that 380. That's when I took over. We're up to about 420 now. Not that, much. Though. It's still not up. Right. Uh, it's to kind of give you a number to, to, to really kind of put it in perspective. Uh, University of Alabama just we partnered and did a study for us. We should have over a thousand. So we're at forty percent. That's what I was thinking. Forty percent. I, I had. I, I was using that statistic, folks. We're supposed to have a thousand troopers, and we got four hundred. Four hundred. That's correct. Now I was told, Spencer. You probably know this, that Maryland, which is almost the same population, but about a third of the size, has two thousand troopers. I don't know if they're quite two thousand, but it's 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 well over a thousand, uh -huh. and it's one of the states we looked at comparatively. Now I've talked to some legislators. Because population wise, right? But I've uh -huh. talked to some legislators that are appalled by that number. But what I think appalled by Maryland it, having so many, or and, and just doesn't even want to consider the possibility of us ever getting there. And that may not be realistic. But what is realistic is we've got to aim towards that thousand number. And if we get to five or six hundred or seven hundred. Uh, that would be great. I'd love to see that in my tenure. Uh, ultimately, the ones that suffer is, is going to be those that need it the most. Uh, so when I talk to those that are appalled by those numbers or challenge me on those numbers, what I say to them is, come see what we do. It's more than just writing a speeding ticket or putting the DUI in jail. Um, we've, we've got over 20 open homicides that we're working right now. Unfortunately, I think we even have members of the legislature, legislature that's not informed to what we do as a state law enforcement agency. Uh, fingerprints at the state level, we handle all that. Uh, our, the, the Criminal Justice Information Network, we handle all of that. Alcohol enforcement, narcotics enforcement. Uh, we do all those things. A very, very diverse state law enforcement agency. And unfortunately, a lot of people just you know, put us in a narrow lane of it's just highway patrol. Mm -hmm. Spencer, you know, one, this, this budget crisis, though, uh, it would even make you lower than 380, wouldn't it? It, it would, uh, Steve. Uh, what the governor vetoed was approximately 38 million out of the general fund. To put that in perspective, last year, just to be level fund, that we're at 55 million. And to say, to give you an idea how that's been cut, go back to 08. Just public safety alone in 08 was was over 80 million. 
Uh, we operated last year at $55 million. We think that's a fair number. So you dropped your budget from 80 to 55 million? From 08 till now, it went from 80 to 55 million. You dropped almost half? Yes, sir. And then now they want to add an additional cut and, and drop it down to 38. Good Lord. Did you talk to Steve Klaus? What did uh, he say? <laughs> uh, probably more than Steve wants me to talk to him. <laughs> I've talked to Steve at length. What I've does he say to, when you say that? Uh, he, he's trying, and I believe uh -huh. he's trying. I think Steve, uh, I served with Steve, he's a great guy. Yeah, I, I think they're trying. Uh, it gets back to this, as you know, I knew during my time. The general fund's broke. We've got to come up with a system to fix that. It's got to be some growth revenue in the general fund. It just has to be. What do you think is, is going to do you think, I, I, what do you think finally is going to resolve this thing? A special session is going to have to be, but they pretty much ignore the governor's request. Um, I, what I really think is is we've, we've got to hold appropriators accountable. It's more than, it's, it's more than saying I'm, I'm pro-law enforcement. Well, if you're pro-law enforcement, you've got to take a difficult vote every now and then. Then go home and educate your constituents. And this is why I had to do that. Um, I, I don't think there's any citizen out there that expects public safety or any state agency to make money off the citizens. No one wants that. We don't want that. But I think they do expect us to perform and give those basic services. And right now, we don't have we don't have the revenue to do that. Thirty-eight million no. is, is going to decimate us. Here's a, here's a thought. I'm just thinking about this. What would be wrong with raising a fee for someone who got a speeding ticket and giving it to the public safety of, of, of uh, and, and, and unfortunately, most of the public, not not most, but we hear it a lot from the public that, well, you're... It's pretty high anyway. Yeah, it, it is, that you're reaching a quota. You're, oh, I see, yeah. Steve, I, I, I think we're getting a dollar to two dollars off of every ticket. Most of that money stays local, 80 to 90 percent. Oh, is that right? That is, yeah, that's right. That, so that goes to that local county clerk uh, or to their local judicial system. We're at a dollar to maybe two dollars. The exception being the DUI, and we have some, some special appropriations off of that. Uh, but uh, tickets, uh, we, we don't see any additional revenue off. That of that would be a solution to me if I was a legislator. If I was back in the legislature, I'd almost offer that. Let's just raise this particular fee uh, for trucks coming through the state right. or something like right. that. That would say they aren't. They, they've got they're having to police these things right. coming through the state and. You know, we got right. somebody's got to police them. You well, know, how they're going to pay for them? I think it gets back to that, those basic services, and I, I think the citizens or even the industry in that situation uh, would support that. I know this: the trucking association, one of our better allies. Here, just professional truckers, they get it. They're professional, so th they want those that are not doing it properly. Um, you know, they want that situation to be addressed, and they know if we're not properly funded, that's not going to be addressed. So one bad situation taints the entire trucking industry. So one of our best supporters is the Alabama Trucking Association. Uh, we're just we're struggling to educate legislators to understand what the need is. Well, that's a logical thing, though, isn't it? It it, it is. I, I can settle in your time, Steve. In my time, I, in eight years, uh, I never voted against law enforcement. Uh, uh, took some tough votes that were maybe a fee increase, but it went for law enforcement, it went for right. firefighters, always supported it. Um, I, I don't know if that's the prevailing mentality anymore. Well, it's a, it's, it's a problem, and I think the entire general fund, but this this to me is the one I've been illuminating. I said, you know, it's not right for us to only have 300 troopers out there, and you know, it's, it, we're a pretty big state. Well, we are, Steve, and, and, but I think, um, you know, it's um, I'm a lifelong conservative, but I believe the primary function of government is to provide public safety. At the national level, it's national defense. Right. At the state level, it's public safety. It's law enforcement. We're not, we're not doing that in Alabama. And all you're talking about is basic needs. Basic needs. But folks, our time's up. I told you to go by quick, Spencer. <laughs> folks, our guest tonight has been Spencer Collier, the uh, Secretary of Alabama Law Enforcement Agency. We thank Tane and I was time to be with us, and we thank you viewers for watching Alabama Politics, and hope you tune again next week. Thank you. Spencer. Thank you, Steve. Enjoy it. Yes, sir.